This fishy looking fly is the hairiest hairy bug, a very effective bluegill and panfish pattern. And this pattern was shown to me by Ray Boudreau from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And Ray is also the creator of the Black Boudreau, which is another very effective bluegill and panfish pattern. The hook I'm using is a one 124th ounce jig head hook that I've painted the head black with Sally Hansen's black hard as nails uh, nail polish. We get our hook secured in the, the tying vise and I'm going to use UTC 70 denier thread in black and I start that thread about the midpoint of the hook and take a few wraps back to just in front of the barb and then bring my thread back to about that midpoint and then trim off that tag end. Now the tail of the fly is made from black stripped goose biots and we're only going to strip a couple of these off for the tail and so we strip two of those from the feather and we hold those biots where they curve away from each other to give us that splayed out tail. And when we strip them off the feather, there's a few little fuzzies on the end and we want to get rid of those. So let's trim those off and then transferring the biots back to my right hand. I'm a right-handed tire. I push them down on each side of the hook and then hold them with my left hand in place and then begin binding down the butt of those biots with a few loose wraps of thread. The biots are really bad about spinning on the hook, so you may have to adjust it several times to keep them level and in place on the hook. So I make a few adjustments and then I start wrapping the butts down. And then I gradually slide my left hand back while holding the biots in place and take a few fairly loose uh, wraps to hold them in place. And you can see how the biots splay out. Now they're, they're twisting a little bit on me, so I'm going to move them around the, the hook shank just a bit there and put them in place. The body of our fly is made from cactus chenille in a very small mid-size, and we're going to use black for this all-black pattern. And so I began by cutting about a six-inch length and then stripping the, the chenille fibers, leaving the bare core, and then tying that bare core just in front of the hook point, and then wrap my thread forward to behind the jig head, and then make touching wraps forward with that mid chenille all the way to the back of the jig head. Now you can use any type of chenille or any type of body material, even peacock curl for this. This fly works really well. So when I get to the back of the jig head, I take a few wraps of thread behind the chenille and a few wraps in front and then reach in with my scissors and trim that off. The hackle on this fly is a dry fly cape feather, and I'm using Hairline's half capes. These are really economical, but good quality feathers for this type of fly. And I pull one appropriately sized, about a hook gap and a half in width. And then you notice that along this area, the, the fibers get much wider. So I'm going to trim my feather there, and I need about two and a half to three inches of hackle for this, for this fly. And I strip off those barbules off the end. And there's a concave side and a convex side, and I'm going to turn that concave side away from the hook and holding that, that stem at an angle, I'll make a few wraps, and then I peel the rest of that stem back and effectively reverse tie this in. This really helps keep that, that hackle from coming loose. And then reach in there carefully and trim that stem off without cutting my hackle. Yep, get it all trimmed off. And then with wide spiral wraps, I move my thread back to the rear of the body of the fly and let the thread hang there. And then I take my hackle pliers and grab the end of the feather in those hackle pliers. And these are the old standard Griffin style teardrop hackle pliers, but any, any hackle plier will work. And I make open spiral wraps, palming that hackle back to the rear of the fly. Now, depending on the length of your hackle, you can make this more dense or less dense, whatever works for you. And then as I get back to the rear of the fly and my hackle is just about gone, I take a couple of wraps of thread just over that tag end of the hackle. Try not to capture any fibers, but you're, you're invariably going to capture a few hackle fibers there, but that, that won't make any difference. And then I reach in and carefully trim off that tag end of that hackle. And then using the Kelly Gallup method of quickly moving the thread forward so it doesn't trap down the fibers, I move my thread back up to behind the, the jig head and then I make a four or five turn whip finish. 
For some reason, when you move the thread quickly, it doesn't trap fibers as badly as if, if you move it slow. So finish the whip finish and then trim the tag end off and my Harry's Harry bug is finished. I hope you'll give this fly a try. It is a really effective bluegill and panfish pattern.